congratulate you with a great album. I just listened to it. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> great. Um, I guess it's been a while since you actually recorded the album. Um, yeah. Did you have time to reflect on it? And if so, did it turn out the way you expected it? Or I don't know. I didn't really have any expectations. And uh, I, every time I listened to anything, at any point, I was really happy with it, which isn't always the case. Sometimes, um, sometimes as the songs are a work in progress, you you know it'll be good at the end, but you know it goes through different periods of arranging and recording where it's not happening. But this this record wasn't like that. It's very much a, it was all written sort of all of us in a room live, except for the lyrics, which I did later, or you know in the middle of. But I did it alone at home, and uh, all the songs were really are arranged in a live setting like if there's a if there's a guitar solo there's no rhythm guitars there's bass it's all so it's very simple that way it's very much approached like an older rock record and uh, I think that that made it really easy to tell what it was going to be like the whole way but none of us really went in with any particular expectations as to what the band would sound like because we'd never been a band before uh, I think a lot of people sort of just assumed that it would sound like Rage Against the Machine with me singing or something um, but none of us ever felt that it would be that way at all. Um, did, you didn't feel any pressures from the press to where there were terms like super group thrown around and stuff like that to where, and people were like, like you said, afraid of thinking it was going to uh -huh. be Rage Against the Machine Phase 2. Yeah, don't take this personally, but uh, um, I, I rarely consider the press in any part of my life. <laughs> no, I, no, that's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you tell me in short how Audio Slave actually came together? Um, I had talked to Tom over a period of a couple of years on and off about different things. He was doing a song for a movie one time, and I, I was busy, uh, so I couldn't work with him. Um, he was talking about doing a solo record, and at the time it didn't seem like it was something I wanted to do. Uh, but that sort of got the ball rolling where we, we had talked to each other, and I knew he was interested in working with me on something. And I had really been thinking that I would just be making solo records and I'd had a lot of really varied offers to do different things with other people um, but when when Rage ended and, and uh, Tom was talking about doing a new band it, it just seemed to me like a great it just felt on a gut level like what a great thing to do you know I can I can uh, make solo records whenever but I, yeah. you know, I'm not always going to have the, the opportunity to uh, to have a, a band like this you know so yeah. um Really, we had we had one meeting I think before we went into a room and started writing, and uh, they didn't go through as people thought they didn't go through like an audition process with people or anything. I just no. you know I I agreed to meet with them and play music and went there and we liked it and uh, I liked it, and I think I was really the first one that just said well, let's let's just be a band. And, and having said that, they I think had to come to grips with the fact that. Uh, because I was very outspoken about it not being Rage Against the Machine, and they didn't yeah. want it to be either, because um, it wasn't going to. I'm not going to get up and rap old rap songs. <laughs> That's not gonna um, and they they didn't feel that way either. They, you know, that wasn't something they expected. So it was within a couple of days, we decided that 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 would be our focus, and okay. that we would be a band. We wrote so many songs so quickly that that kind of to me has always been what constitutes a band if you're sitting in a room and you're writing songs you're a band so it just kind of happened really well, quickly was it uh, hard for you to come in a situation where the other band members actually were playing together and kind of knew each other for numeral years um i thought that it might be at, before i met them but actually when i first walked in the first time i met timmy and brad I, I completely turned around because I realized, wow, I'm rather than a band forming with a bunch of people who've never played together, uh, I'm working with three people that already know how to play with each other really well. Yeah. And uh, that I think made a, a lot of the process a lot more fun and, and uh, a, a lot better. You know, they were all we were writing new songs. They already know how to play with each other in that context. The music was very different than what they'd done before, but it still ended up being, I think, a really good thing. When you guys came together, did you take a fresh approach, or did you were there old ideas you had laying on the shelf that you brought in? Uh, I think everything was was brand new. Brand new. Yeah. Um, also, it's it, if you, again, if you have to believe the press, it seemed that Audio Slave kind of endured it like a di difficult birth with the mm -hmm. on and off stories. Mm -hmm. If there was any transition period, was mm -hmm. that the difficult one or? 
the the biggest problem we ran into was that because we were two separate entities, we brought together two separate record contracts, two separate record companies, two separate management companies, two separate lawyers and law firms. Uh, and it, it, it was very difficult on the business end to feel like we were being represented as a group because we really weren't. We were no. being represented as two separate entities that are doing a project. And that wasn't how any of us wanted it, this to be. We wanted this to be a band in every way. And it made it especially irritating to me that the band got along so great. We were so prolific right away. Um, we were really feeling so great and so confident about what we were doing, but we were getting really nothing but uh, negatives from, from the business side of it that, yeah. that, that are representing us, just in their inability, I think, to, to work together. And Sony and, and uh, Epic and Interscope actually came to some agreements on how to deal with it pretty quickly, but the uh, management companies weren't getting along. And when we would sit in a room and talk business, uh, and and I understand why this would happen. My manager really was there representing me, and their managers were really there representing them, um, because at the end of the day, that's what their job is. But it just didn't work. Um, so at some point, we had been a band for a really long time. We'd had songs for a very long time, and we didn't even know what the record sounded like yet. And we're already starting to be pressured to agree to a tour and. Uh, Know, get the ball rolling and it was it, for me it was too much pressure yeah um, I just come from making a solo record and, and basically doing whatever the hell I wanted and I started to feel nothing against the band but but that you know I'm gonna step back for a while because this is too much for me so the first thing we really did was we started listening to the songs and everyone got really excited and then we uh, we went and interviewed new managers and that was a huge moment. The fact that we could walk into a room as as a band and all meet someone new for the first time, mm -hmm. uh, we felt like a band, and that that solved really, I think, all of our problems. Listening to the album, it sounds to me very like fresh and, and very diverse. I mean, Race Against the Machine used to be, you know, they, they had a great groove, and mm -hmm. all the songs were kind of going that way. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you with Soundgarden, your solo stuff, it was very diverse all mm -hmm. along. Um, do you think with you coming into this band? Or starting this band with these guys that it allowed the guys to actually experiment more musically because they had a, uh, a guy that could you know have a big vocal range could go up and down and basically could lay out a lot of emotions in the songs um, yeah like I said before I didn't really know what to expect the, uh, the first couple of songs I would write I would leave the room with a guitar and write a bridge part and come back and there would be or a key change or something that would be more like something that I would do uh, but not writing the entire song, it felt very fresh to me. And uh, the collaboration worked from the first day. I, I, w I went into a room, wrote a bridge part for the first song we wrote, and they played it. And it wasn't like something they were used to, but they really liked it. And once that spark c came on, it's like, okay, we can, we can be our own band and do this differently. Then after that, it just started to come really easy. Yeah. Um... After your uh, solo album, which was basically more mellow and melodic than what you mm -hmm. did with Soundgarden, was this kind of also a thing to explore your harder side again uh, with some of the songs, like set it off? Or yeah, I, I didn't. I actually felt very much like with Soundgarden, I wrote a lot of the music and uh, a lot of harder riff stuff. And when I made my solo record, I I, I really was tired of that. I had, I had a lot of other stuff musically to explore. In this band. Um, most of the riffs came from Tom or, or, or Timmy, and it, it was more inspiring to write over because it was somebody else doing it, not me or, or people I'd worked with for a long time. And I wasn't sure how fresh that would feel to me, especially in terms of phrasing and melodies. Um, but I, had, I just was immediately inspired by it, and it felt great to, uh, to play more aggressive music again for a while. I always go kind of go up and down. Yeah. Um, but uh, the the other really big difference, which you mentioned earlier about the groove, uh, Soundgarden had a lot of time time signature changes yeah. and a lot of like three four stuff or six four or seven four or uh, you know five four in the middle of a four four. Uh, one of the first conversations I had with Tom was that he was very much a, a player that likes a groove and straight four timing and and. Uh, 
that made that that's made a lot of difference for me because I've never done that with a body of work where it's a, where it's the, there's just a constant groove that's very simple and it allows me as a singer to to have more freedom. Yeah, but it amazes me how how different they played. Like in songs like Getaway Car, I'm the Highway, that mm -hmm. it brings out stuff. I would you say they came out with the riffs. It more it seemed like those mm -hmm. were kind of songs that more came from you, uh -huh. and they adapted to do it so so good. But yeah, I think that once. Once we got over a couple of days and a few songs where we, we got into a little mellow or melodic style and it worked, then uh, they really all came to the table with different stuff. And you know, I think that they probably had a really prolific moment doing music that they'd never done before in Rage, which I understand totally. Yeah. Um, they it it was in them all the time, obviously. Yeah. Um, how was it to work with Rick Rubin? Because you hear he most of the time, uh, from the stories you hear from other artists, he's kind of laid back, not really gets too involved with it. Uh -huh. um, how was your experience with recording with Rick Rubin? My experience was that he was involved in every aspect, every step of the way, even all the way up to um, finishing the record. He still has opinions about what songs, in what order you should play live, what the sequence is on the record. Um, everything so you know I don't know how he is with other people this is the first time I work with him but he was involved heavily in pre-production and arranging uh, all the way through to still being involved how was it's so comprehensive I don't know that mm. I've heard of another producer um, being this involved unless it's like a boy band where they actually pick the songs pick the players pick everything. yeah everything <laughs> Uh, how is it uh, with your experiences with the last sound on record you guys produce it yourselves uh, mm -hmm. Was there something you brought to the table? Is it you feel more comfortable working with someone or doing it yourself? So as to have done both. Well, um, it's a lot of work to do it yourself. I I initially didn't want to uh, self-produce that Soundgarden record. The rest of the guys in the band thought it would be a good idea, and now I'm really glad that we did it. Because first of all, um, I think we had the last record was the most fun we all had in the studio because it was really ours, everyone was there all the time. Yeah. And I think it turned out great. But uh, also, having worked with producers before, I never really let them do their job because I, I, I usually didn't trust them. Generally, it would, uh, we did it more or less so that the record company would feel like we were in good hands and then by the third day I would stonewall them so hard that they would stop even giving us any suggestions and they would just record the record. Yeah. With Rick, I, uh, he is very much into the live approach when it comes to recording, and this band is very much that type of band. And so to me it seemed like, like a perfect fit. And I also felt like I had been so involved with every aspect of Soundgarden, and then also with my solo record, you know, everything, that I was ready to, to like let go of the reins and let somebody else do their job. It, had it not been Rick, I don't know if I would have done that, but uh, I really felt like it's time for me to see what it's like to let everyone do their job. And I knew in the back of my mind that if I did that, it, the results would be great. Because I'm just you know, concerned about what I bring to it and not concerned about what everyone else does because I know they're all gonna show up and do, do what they need to do and do the best that they can do. Yeah. And uh, I mean, this band has a really strong work ethic and it, they're all really motivated and that's, that's great. Um, Vocal-wise, uh, you always love to uh, use your voice and create harmonies and stuff, which worked out great. And also on this record, I heard a couple of times. Is that stuff you you uh, know before you actually lay the track down how it's supposed to be, or does it is the end result of lots of experimentation in the studio? Um, well, it's both. Every time I make a record, I have all of the experience that I had previously. Um, the last three or four Soundgarden records, as well as my solo record, I did most of the vocals alone I, in a room by myself I just ran the board and, and uh, this record I didn't do it that way but I, I experimented a lot I know how to get different sounds that I want and uh, but then then again while I'm doing it like new ideas will come up um, on this record I think there was a couple of songs where when I went in to record I changed everything I changed the vocal melody changed the lyrics changed everything just at the last minute because I there was some, I just wasn't excited about what I was doing and I would call Rick who wasn't even there and, and say, you know, let me, I'm going to try something else and then I would sing it and send it to him and the rest of the band and that, that's always happened to me. I've, I've 
I could spend four days writing the lyrics for one song, go to sing it, realize it's garbage, re rewrite it in ten minutes, and then be thrilled with it. I've, I've always been pretty open to just whatever works, whatever is inspiring. I don't really have any specific methods. I wanted to touch the song Chokies. Uh, I, I heard about the, it's about the chief. Um, is the, are the lyrics that were, or was it pure the title that was? It's just the title. It's yeah. just the title. the title. I think the song, the feel of the song musically and vocally reminded Tom of, of, the, of Cochise's life. And uh, I often like a sort of a detached title or a title that, that kind of is something reminiscent of the feel, but it's not trying to tell you what the song is about. Um, I think that, uh, that's just something I think that's better sometimes. It's more creative, it's left field, but the, yeah, the, lyric, the lyrics aren't really, they're not pointed or uh, anything about Cochise. It'd be very different. Yeah. <laughs> Well, was it was for them. Uh, was it kind of a release for them to kind of drop the political side of things and have you come in with more personal lyrics? Is it, was that a change that affected affected the music too? Uh, you think? I don't know how how it affected the music. Uh, my first conversations with Tom before I even met the rest of the band was that that uh, myself as a writer, I'm I'm not inspired by coming in with politically motivated ideas. It's not what I do. And they were all very open to that. And it feels to me at this point like they feel very free from from that in terms of how it sort of binds you into one category and forces you to sort of have to do one thing. Uh, but it was it was never much of an issue. We really Everyone took it, you know, for what it would end up being, and didn't try to make it anything. Just let's see what happens, and it started happening so fast that, uh, you know, we didn't get in the way of ourselves. Um, look, if you hear the CD, would you agree that it kind of combines all the elements of what you guys have done in the past, separate, and then in the band it kind of comes together? Because when I hear the songs, I hear elements of. Mm -hmm. your solo stuff, elements of Race them Against the Machine and some elements of Soundgarden, it all kind of blends together and mm -hmm. creates this fresh new approach. Just yeah, I, I would totally agree with that. I think, you know, that that is a really natural thing, a natural progression. We're all bringing parts of who we are and what our histories are to, to the table and creating something new. Um, it w we had, like I said before, no specific plan as to what we should sound like. Uh, and that was pretty exciting because often, you know, when a, when a band starts and when they come together, they're usually really young. They don't have much experience with songwriting. They make a lot of mistakes before they start doing things well. Uh, so it takes a while. And, but you sort of discover and rediscover who you are as a band until you decide what you really want to sound like. With us, we had all the experience in the world, and so we discovered what we sounded like very quickly because we didn't make those mistakes. Uh, we just suddenly had a body of work that we were really excited about, and that became uh, who we were. Okay. Um, we're talking now about a full band, so we can also expect a tour. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Will this mean your solo stuff will be on the back burner for a while, or is yeah, I, I'm I'm really happy with being in this band right now. So you know, I. We hope to make more records and tour and yeah. be a real band. It's uh, we've been through a lot already, having not even put out a record. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and that brings you closer together. Yeah, you know? uh, nothing like a little drama to make a band a real band. As a, as an LF fan, I have to ask: any future collaborations, maybe in the future with Ellen and Natasha? Uh, no, I have no plans to do anything but this right now. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, thank you so much.